better. Nice, beautiful smile. Hi right, guys, homesteading cheaper by the dozen. This video is a little bit out of sequence of what we intended it to be originally, but um, the reason being, the uh, original videos get lost somehow in the process. So now we're gonna remake it. Um, on the way out, we had some trouble dying out. We knew it wasn't watering the fuel because we drained the tank before we left and put heat in the tank. So still kind of skeptical. After we stopped several times, let it turn the RV off and let it cool down. And a couple times dad got underneath and beat on the tank, fired up, took off again. So that was indicative of a fuel pump issue. And we've had always had a really loud fuel pump and our cousins that bought the same RV have a really loud fuel pump as well. So we we're kind of thinking maybe it's normal. I always heard that a loud fuel pump is what happens before it goes out. And sure enough, that's what was going on with it. So main mechanic here, Caleb, was able to tell us what you got going on. Um, one reason we're posting this video is it was a real bugger to find this fuel pump. Like, the first place we went was AutoZone, and this is the original fuel pump that has these wire connectors. It's actually a well-built fuel pump, the wool barrel or whatever, but wall barrel, bro, has a nice little pre or final strainer there, and then of course it'll have the sock strainer on the bottom. All the parts that we've pulled up have been for an F53 chassis for this motorhome. But for some reason, we went to CarQuest, AutoZone, Advance, and everybody was giving us the wrong stuff. Most everybody wanted to sell just that pump. Okay, show me. Just that pump for right around 100 bucks. And we finally settled on Napa, which we like Napa parts better anyway. And I was so elated that they had it. I didn't even ask them to match, price match, but um, it was comparable. It was like 100, 100 to 110 dollars, so right in the same price range. So, show me what you did, buddy. All right. So I wasn't able to pop this off, but Dad, Dad figured out that you're supposed to push this down and it unlocks the, all the hoses, and that all pulls off and just pulls apart. Yeah, we we kind of boogered this up a little bit because if you do. Theoretically, um, if anybody has an RV, I'd get online and find the right pump. And if you buy just that without the whole assembly, you can get them for like 30 bucks. I'd buy one, throw it in the glove box and have it ready to go. But this has got a bunch of little keeper tabs to get it apart. And they kind of got boogered up. My, my main mechanic man, strong like bull. And he went to town on it. But dad was able to figure out that this little keeper right here, it's just like Ford fuel lines. If you push down on that, it unlocks the three hoses that come out of here and then it just pops apart. So that was our first joy ex experience. Then what? How did we get the tank? Uh, we pulled the hoses. We, not the hoses, my bad. We, pulled the, we did pull the hoses, but we couldn't get to the ones on top okay, at so first. And would, then we pulled the, um, the straps and that dropped the tank down at the back just enough to where I could crawl up under the axle and then crawl over and get on top of the tank. Yeah, we put a floor jack up underneath of the board to hold the tank. It's a steel tank. I think we have the 85 gallon tank. And fortunately, our main mechanic man is a lot skinnier than dad. Um, I think he jacked, you jacked up the frame just a little bit right yeah. here, right? Jacked up the frame. Gave himself a little bit of room, but if you look in there, over that chunk, there's not a bunch of room. And the sad thing was we, it was right when we got to our buddy's house. So it, it was, was pretty, hot. pretty toasty in there. We sat in crawl in there and show everybody how to do it, the proper technique. Not really. But no, that's fine. Um, yeah, I, I actually think I could have fit in there if I wasn't blessed with a skinny little guy that could reach over the tank, but. Yeah, we set the box fan up here to blow under there and give him a little bit of air. And cool thing, I don't know if this will help anybody, but that was a Napa number. 
Um, cool thing for it was that Napa was able to pull up the fuel pump based on our VIN number or our tag number. Not that you should be giving your VIN number or tag number to everybody, but... Uh, I was I was desperate enough. Oh yeah, before we started the trip, we'd actually change out the fuel filter. They're cheap, like 15 bucks, 20 bucks, so we try to change one of those out every time we go on a long trip and keep an extra with us. Easiest, cheapest fix first, and then we move up to the more expensive stuff. All right. Unless we know exactly what it is. So, if anybody, hopefully this can help somebody else. 93 Ford chassis, um, F53 with the, with the 460 motor. Um, good luck give us some thumbs up and comments and i'll have a good day everybody's chilling having breakfast getting ready to go to the beach what's y'all's favorite beach Virginia. awesome awesome um yeah one more side note hopefully this fuel pump video will save somebody a lot of time the worst thing about the fuel pump deal is and I called about the fuel pump when we first bought this RV and they told me the same thing is you have to buy, you have to pull it out and take it in for them to know that they're giving you the right one. So, and to order it usually takes a day. So you don't want to be broke down on the side of the road. Order it in, get the wrong one, wait a day, order it in, get the wrong one. And then by the third time you've been out five days on the road and, and it'd, that'd be a stinky deal. Um, we were real blessed to make it into our buddy's house to where we could change the dude out and and not be broke down on the side of the road but hopefully this will help somebody else out and if you're if your pump's getting loud and whining you having any kind of intermittent fuel cutout issues or whatever go ahead and change that dude out before you get out on the road with it especially if it's a higher mileage like ours with the what if you had 106,000 miles now i think so that's my tip for the day for cheap